Here now, Dr. George Borlase, Assistant Executive Director for Hazard Identification and Reduction at the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and Steve Feldstein, Director of B2B Solutions at Brother International. Gentlemen, thanks both very much for joining me. Uh, Dr. Borlase, I want to start with you. Tell me about how you work with industry for safety precautions on Internet of Things devices. So with the Consumer Product Safety Commission, we're really taking an approach of trying to educate everyone early. So we're taking an approach on education. Um, the everyone aspect is really important for us. Uh, for example, as we're looking at consumer products in the Toy Association, most of their members are small businesses. So we're not dealing just with the large multinational corporations, but a lot of small businesses. And then early, we're trying to get uh, to the businesses as they're developing software so they can integrate safety aspects into the software and do the software and hardware in integration in a much better way. Steve, we were joking before we went on the air that soon I'll be able to tell my brother printer to print out something. Where are we now as far as the interaction between people and devices on the Internet of Things? So, you know, good point. I, I think we are at the cusp of, of really where this technology can potentially lead us. Um, you know, today we have lots of different ways to customize, for example, office equipment and copiers and printers, uh, being able to uh, change what the control panel looks like uh, to individuals or to work groups. Uh, and we have ways for, uh, to disable certain functionality and features depending on the security requirements uh, for organizations. How far are we from devices being able to communicate with each other in order for me to tell something to do something and in order for that to happen it has to interact with some other device? Yeah, so I mean today we, we currently have ways to do that and um, a lot of the time it's you know really dealing with your laptop or your computer and it's just sending signals that way but uh, certainly the, the voice recognition piece of it is something that uh, our company currently is working on and, and uh, soon hopefully we'll have some great technology that uh, you'll be able to actually just talk to the device and, and allow it to print or scan or uh, wherever the case, wherever you know, you'd like to send it. George, last time you were here we talked about software as a consumer product. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that's, that has evolved, how that, that process has evolved CPSC. So uh, as we're focusing on this new idea of software as a component of the consumer product, we're really focusing on the interagency partnerships and some of the industry partnerships. So uh, since last time we talked, strengthening with uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, their National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, working with them, and then industry associations, the American Home Appliance Manufacturers, for example, and others that have industry members that are bringing IoT into their products. The thing about this field that I think is striking is that historically, technologies have rolled out and consumers have realized the benefits and adopted them. Mm -hmm. IoT seems to be happening in, almost in reverse. Consumers are saying, I want something that does this, and then people develop that. What does that mean for the safety aspects of approving things or, or understanding technologies mm -hmm. and products? Well, for us, uh, we don't do a pre-market approval. Sure. So we're really looking at things after they're on the market, which mm -hmm. is why the focus is so much on integrating the design of safety into the product as they're developing it. Mm -hmm. From a, a product uh, producer perspective, mm -hmm. does that demand shift, does that kind of that demand tree looking so differently mean anything different from the way that a company looks at approaching an I the IoT market? Well, I, I think from a security point of view uh, in particular, absolutely, because there are going to be all kinds of technology requirements that individuals and companies are going to demand as we continue to allow our devices access to all kinds of data. Uh, some of that could be very confidential data, mm -hmm. and of course we don't want that getting into the wrong hands. So um, the ability for manufacturers to have that kind of capability and to be able to customize and say, okay, uh, individual X, you, you have security credentials, we're going to allow you to have access to the device, be able to print, scan to a variety of areas uh, from that device is critical and I think that's something that you know as time goes on it, it's going to get even better. Security is obviously a, a field of very high interest to people in government. Also looking though at the way people will work five years from now, ten years from now, we've seen a lot of attention paid to workspaces and so on Steve. What does the future of work look like vis-a-vis -vis the Internet of Things? 
what is an office, how does an office function maybe five years from now differently than it does today, and how does that impact the way people do their jobs? Yeah, well, I think we're already seeing that. You know, the, the days of coming to an office, uh, you know, for eight hours and working at a desk, you know, are already starting to diminish. Uh, we have a huge mobile workforce today that because of the Internet of Things can work anywhere. And we're seeing more and more of that um, as time goes on. And certainly being able to connect to devices wherever they may be, especially if you're in sales and you need, you know, for example, uh, critical information, contract information, uh, either to be scanned to or printed from devices, wherever you may go, and even on the site at a customer location, I think that's critical, and that's uh, something that we have today mm -hmm. already, and I think that's gonna continue to get even better um, and allow us to access more information securely. George, how big an issue is IoT for the federal government right now, would you say? Oh, I would say it's huge in a couple ways. One, we've seen the focus uh, for a lot of eight agencies and departments where they're better able to execute their missions. The Department of Defense better able to protect the warfighter, incorporating Internet of Things capabilities. From a regulatory agency perspective, we're seeing two things for us. One, the pace of innovation. They talk about us being in the fourth industrial age, the exponential age, and the pace at which the Internet of Things by large companies is being incorporated in to the products um, really is uh, challenging us to make sure that we stay abreast of it. Mm -hmm. And then as the devices are interconnected, it also highlights the interconnected jurisdictional issues that we have as regulatory agencies. The data security, privacy issues overlapping with the safety issues uh, really forces us to make sure that we're working as best we can with our other federal agency partners. Steve, we have about a minute left. There's a concept I want to ask you to define and, and tell me why it matters. That's the concept of field service management. How's the IoT affecting that? So from a field service management, it, it basically, from an office equipment perspective, it's allowing us to troubleshoot devices remotely. So no longer do we have to actually send a service technician, which is obviously labor cost and time intensive, to an, a device to figure out what's actually going on. So mm -hmm. remotely, our dealers and resellers across the country have the ability, as long, again, for firewall sake, and, and as long as the end user allows us access to the device, we can actually go in, take a look, see what's going on, um, and then also be able to send, for example, toner and supplies uh, directly to that end user. Again, they don't, won't even know half the time that there was even a problem because we can uh, access that device 24-7. Steve, George, thanks both very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with commentary from Steve Vito. Entrepreneurial Government is brought to you in part by Brother. Make your agency hum with Brother Business Solutions. Learn more at brothersolutions.com.